Hi, it's Drake. I'm going to read three poets. Hi, I'm just going to read three different poems. Two by John Crow Ransom, who is a fugitive poet. And the same crowd as John Gould Fletcher and Robert Penn Warren and others. And then I'm going to read one by Giacomo Leopardi. The first one is called Winter Remembered. And it's one of my favorite poems ever. Uh, I just love it so much. Winter Remembered. And also, uh, there's a poet, George Dillon, who wrote a poem, Spring Remembered. And then... Uh, Oh no, he wrote S Some Remembered. Well, he wrote Some Remembered, and then I wrote the opposite, but mine is very bad. <laughs> so the, this one is Winter Remembered. Two evils, monstrous, either one apart, possessed me, and were long and loath at going. A cry of absence, absence in the heart, and in the wood the furious winter blowing. Think not when fire was bright upon my bricks, and past the tight boards hardly a wind could enter, I glowed like them, the simple burning sticks, far from my cause, my proper heat and center. Better to walk forth in the frozen air and wash my wound in the snows that would be healing, because my heart would throb less painful there, being caked with cold and past the smart of feeling. And where I walked, the murderous winter blast, would have this body bowed, these eyeballs streaming. And though I think this heart's blood froze not fast, it ran too small to spare one drop for dreaming. Dear love, these fingers that had known your touch and tied our separate forces first together were ten poor idiot fingers not worth much, ten frozen parsnips hanging in the weather. I memorized that last stanza long ago. And then this one is called Survey of Literature by John Crow Ransom. In all the good Greek of Plato, I lack my roast beef and potato. A better man was Aristotle, pulling steady on the bottle. I dip my hat to Chaucer, swilling soup from his saucer, and to Master Shakespeare, who wrote big on small beer. The abstemious Wordsworth subsisted on a curd's worth, but a slick one was Tennyson, putting gravy on his venison. What these men had to eat and drink is what we say and what we think. The influence of Milton came wry out of Stilton. Sing a song for Percy Shelley, drowned in pale lemon jelly. And for precious John Keats, dripping blood of pickled beets. Then there was poor Willie Blake, he foundered on too sweet cake. God have mercy on the sinner who must write with no dinner. No gravy and no grub, no pewter and no pub, no belly and no bowels, only consonants and vowels. In all the good Greek of Plato, I lack my roast beef and potato. And then I'll read um, <clears throat> one by Leopardi. It's called The Infinite. And this is the poem that got me interested in him. I just think it's an interesting idea. Or infinity, I guess it was translated as. But this lonely hill was always dear to me and this hedgerow which cuts off the view of so much of the last horizon. But sitting here and gazing, I can see beyond, in my mind's eye, unending spaces, and superhuman silences, and depthless calm, till what I feel is almost fear. And when I hear the wind stir in these branches, I begin comparing that endless stillness with this noise. And the eternal comes to mind and the dead seasons, and the present living one, and how it sounds. 
so my mind sinks in this immensity, and foundering is sweet in such a sea. Just wanted to read a couple poems that I've, I've liked for a while now. <laughs> well, anyway, that's all.